So you want to go bigger. You want more. Bigger tires, bigger lift, bigger Jeep. Why not a bigger screen? Hey guys and gals, Mike here from Trail7. Today we're gonna to talk about our new Sony 9500 ES plug and play bundle that we've just put together and we're ready to launch it. This is Sony's top of the line mobile in-dash system. It boasts a 10.1 inch capacitive touchscreen, wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, and it has the ability to connect multiple cameras, up to three. Not only do you have your rear camera, but you can also install one in the front, in the side, in the fenders. The best thing is, I'm gonna show you how easy this is to install. With Trail 7's plug and play bundle that we send to you, it is 100% pre-wired with everything that you need for a super easy install. I'm gonna show you, let's get it done. All right, everybody, now it's disassembly time. We're gonna go ahead and show you the full disassembly process and we'll be right back here in a minute. And that starts with removal of this lower dash panel. So it, it's one piece under here, and if you put your fingers right underneath the steering column, you can just pull straight at you and lower all the way down and slide it out towards you. Go ahead and set this piece aside. Behind the panel, there are two screws that you need to remove. One is here and one is here. With a 932nd socket wrench, we're going to go ahead and remove those. Remove the other one. Hey, recommendation on all of these screws that you take out from your dash, go ahead and drop them in your cup holder. We're of course gonna need those for reassembly. There's one more on the dashboard here. There's a total of four of these screws. Two under the dash, one up on top here, and there's one behind the window, the window switches. Recommend a, a panel remover right underneath the window switch panel. It pops right out. Behind here, it's a two-way lock. Push that up, lock that down, and it'll pull right out. After you disconnect that, go ahead and store that in the cup holder. And then there you'll find the fourth screw to install. After that, that's out, you're ready to remove the full dash panel. Recommend go ahead and lowering your steering wheel all the way down. Makes it a lot easier to navigate around. And you can reach up on the left side behind the speaker lever and right up front here and you'll see it pulls right out. And there's no need to disconnect the air vents. And store that in the back seat as well. Now that we have the dash apart, you'll see there are four screws surrounding the stock head unit. Once you have the screws out, to get this out, just pull it straight out at you. A little bit of wiggling, and it'll come right out. Once this is out, the head unit has four factory connectors. And these will pop right out with the pressing in the tab, the safety lock tab in the back. And there you go. Your stock head unit is out. All right, the stock unit is out. The next part that needs to happen here is to remove this lower panel. What a recommendation though is to make it easier to put, go ahead and put the vehicle into drive. So with that, I'm gonna put the parking brake on, turn the auxiliary on, and put it in the drive. So the reason for that is to remove this panel here. And similar to the panel that's under the dashboard, just pull the top tabs straight out. There's a U-Connect box that not all are equipped with, equipped with stock. 
However, if yours is, you're going to want to remove a cable that's connected to that. You can set this aside. Again, with the 932nd tool, uh, socket wrench, there are two screws mounting the Uconnect box in here. One's on the bottom and one's up top. What I recommend for this bottom piece is there's a little screw in here that's a little hard to reach. What I recommend is having a magnet strip or a pair of small needle nose pliers if that screw falls in there, which I'm sure it will. I'll be able to get that out with my little magnet stick here. Of course, there isn't much room to work in here. You're moving the Uconnect box, you want to remove the USB. There are two clips connecting the USB. This larger one, which you're going to leave intact, and the smaller one is the USB, which we're going to use. We're going to use that in order to install a new USB cable to the new Sony head unit and that's going to allow you to use your factory USB port for charging purposes. So this cable is included in your bundle. It's going to come uh, out of the box that we send you attached, connected to the Sony head unit. It may be easier to go ahead and disconnect it in order to be able to fish it down into the console here. So we're going to continue pulling this cable all the way through to remove the slack from down below. Go ahead and connect the cable that you've installed to the factory cable that was plugged into your Uconnect box. And there's plenty of room back behind here to pull all of the access cable up into the back area of where the head unit will will set. All right, now that that's fully installed and all of the cabling that you have that you'll be able to tuck down beneath, you can reinstall the Uconnect. Even though the Uconnect is no longer functioning, um, I would recommend go ahead and reinstalling it back in its place in case later on down the, the line you wanted to reinstall it for something. The, the one screw that's a little difficult to get back in is here in the bottom. What I recommend doing is go ahead and sliding that into the, the slot on the Uconnect device, holding that with the back of your hand and feeding that into its slot. Otherwise, you run the risk of it falling into the console. Bing. Now let's install the second screw back into the Uconnect device. And that's it for that piece. I'm gonna go ahead and, and um, just wrap up some of this cable here. I'm gonna put a zip tie on it just to get it out of the way. In your installation parts bag that we provide, you'll find the navigation antenna. Let's go ahead and get that installed. You'll need this in order to operate your CarPlay navigation system, of course. All right, so in, in order to install the GPS antenna, uh, the best place that we found, which is most accessible and, and unobstructed, would be right here on the dash behind the little eye. Um, I'd recommend that you prep this area with alcohol, cleaning, et cetera, et cetera, right? There is a, a double-sided adhesive sticky tape that comes on the, um, the provided antenna. If you reach behind the dash, you'll find a rubber seal. You can push that rubber seal down with your fingers and you'll see this leads right into the dashboard. So if I grab the end of it, push it down on the dash, you're able to see right here, right through here, how the cable does come right through. So go ahead and push that all the way through Apply your double-sided tape and mount your antenna right in front of the eye. You can go ahead and clean up the cabling. 
Now we're ready to install the, uh, the provided microphone. So this is necessary to install. The factory microphone will not be retained. We recommend installing that right above the steering wheel to avoid any wind noise. Obviously it's a Jeep. We can take our top off or doors off. Um, so I found the best spot to be right here above the steering wheel. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and get it wired through. However, I'm not gonna mount it. Recommendation is to, is to not fully adhere the tape to the steering wheel, uh, to the steering column until after the dash is in place or it'll, it'll, uh, it'll get in the way of the reinstallation. I'm gonna fish this cable through the back of the, the dash. Pull this all the way through. And again, I wouldn't adhere this yet. Just go ahead and set this up here, which is gonna be right on top of the steering wheel column. Go ahead and, and clean this area with a alcohol swab. Um, make sure it's free of any dust. Now I'm cleaning up all of the access cable. Next, we're gonna install this OBD too. Uh, what this does is it, it allows us to retain the vehicle data and diagnostic. For this, I do recommend uh, a fish tape or, or a hanger of some sort. Um, you do have to run a cable going down to the bottom of the dash. Good part is there's a, there's a channel way. It's pretty simple just to push this all the way through. It'll come right out the bottom. So the LBD is where we're going to plug this right into here. Recommend plugging this in first and then running the cable through. There's a pathway where you can run the cable on top of this cable here. This factory cable. And then above over here, there's a bridge on the dash, the lower dash. You can run the cable across that. Go ahead and feed the cable through. And you'll be able to tuck this nice and neat right behind the dash lip. Now that you have attached this to your fish tape or hanger, whichever you decide or have, have handy. All right, now we're back. Now let's go ahead and get moving forward with our uh, Sony 9500ES install. So here we're gonna show you, now that everything has been removed, disassembled and prepped for us, to remove the Sony screen and put that off aside. And as previously mentioned, the, the, the bundles that you receive from Trail 7 are gonna come pre-wired with everything that you need. All right, so in this case here, we went ahead and selected for the Sirius XM. Um, you'll see on the website that it is an option. So we have that harness here uh, as part of this install. So what I've done is I, I've laid all of the cables coming off the top to kind of um, help make it a little bit easier. I will mention that if you did select for the reverse camera or any camera, um, this separate wire harness, which will be located in the extra parts bag, go ahead and install that. This is required for the camera install, finishing that up. So let's connect our main harness connection here. Let's go ahead and connect our, now pulling it down through the center part. Let's go ahead and connect the OBD2 connection. Also pulling down to the center part. This is the USB connection. Go ahead and grab the microphone that you ran, the cable that we ran. 
that goes to the red circle there, the back of the unit. The AM FM radio. This connects to the white coming out of the Jeep. If you elected, if you selected the Sirius XM, that's going to be the turquoise connector with the orange mustard connector coming out of the Jeep. Snap that in. The separate GPS antenna that you ran, this plugs into the back of the unit here. The gray connector. Now let's go ahead and find the best spot for all of these cables. But you want to make sure that you don't push, I'm going to hold this up here, you don't push this connector back in. This is needed in order to install the window control box. Give it a nice gentle push on all sides there. One thing you do need to be careful for is that where this uh, connector is, is sticking out from, the window control unit needs to slide back in here. So you need to make sure that you don't leave anything in this center spot here or else you won't be able to slide this back into space. So as long as you have enough room there, then you know when you put the center console back together um, that you won't have any issues with anything impeding that way. All right, let's go ahead and put a, a couple of screws in here just to hold it in. What I'd like to do is, um, like to just get it into place. We can put the screen into place, uh, power the, the Jeep on, make sure that the power is connected, make sure all the connections work. All right, now that that's in, the next step would be sliding in the Sony 9500 screen into place. And it's in. Now we've got it set in. Um, let's just do a quick check for power, connectivity. The head unit works, mobile ES, beautiful. Close our main screen. All right, so let's go ahead and button everything up. Let's remove our screen. Remember, we only put two screws into the carriage here. So let's go ahead and put our two screws in. You don't need to tighten this down, you know, crazy tight. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. And that's fine. Let's grab our dash piece. Slides right in, nice fit right back in. You can now go ahead and snap the microphone into its clip that you previously attached. Let's go ahead and install the, the one screw. We have one more screw up top here. We have two more screws inside here. And that's one where I would um, I would just be careful with these here because these plastic uh, dash pieces are uh, are a little fragile. So no need to go crazy tight on that. It's gonna hold. I go ahead and install our window control. Snaps right in, and it snaps right in. Um, I'm gonna move over to this side, actually. You wanna zip tie this up here. Anywhere is fine. Just anywhere that's easy and out of the way. All right, now that that is secured back there, go ahead and reinstall the glove box. 
slides into the clips in the bottom. The two pieces push in, close it up, and that's done there. Let's go ahead and install our screen now. It just slides right into place, give it a little tiny bit of a push. Again, don't worry about that, we're going to wipe that down. So there, there's five screws here total. Four of the same, one is different. What you want to do is you want to install, you want to screw in the, the four of the same ones first. That last one actually um, helps to secure a trim piece that'll cover up the metal exposed part in the back. So start with the smaller, shorter, fatter screws, and those go on the edges. On the top, there are two on the outside, and the bottom also two on the outside. This last one, again, as I said, it fits on the top in the middle. Here you go. There's the final installed um, Sony 9500 ES, and, and I'll let you know that um, this has multiple adjustments, right? So this can be adjusted a couple of inches up. It can be adjusted a little bit further down. It can be adjusted to the left. It can be adjusted to the right. It actually has uh, a telescopic adjustment to where it can be adjusted out further. Um, this happens to be all the way in as far as it'll go. Um, and it does actually have a tilt where it can tilt uh, a little bit further back or straight up and down as I have it here. So the adjustments that I found here give you still plenty of visibility to your windshield. Uh, still gives you access to your controls, to your air vents, etc. Um, and I just think it actually fits really well. So as you can see, the date and the time are not set yet. So let's go ahead and set the date and time. Settings, system, date time. Today is the 20th, 1220. Twenty twenty two, of course. Time is three thirty six seven PM. Hit OK. And you're good to go. Date time, twelve hour format, etc. All right, let's go ahead and connect our phone to our Sony 9500 ES wirelessly. Let's go into settings. Let's turn our Bluetooth off. Let's go to settings, device connection. Now let's turn our Bluetooth on. Add new device. Let's give that a second to find it. There we go, it found it. Hit uh, 9500 ES. And there we go, pair. Hit pair on your phone, pair on the screen. Your contacts to sync, allow. Select Apple CarPlay. And there you go, it found us. And it's 26 minutes to home. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look at um, some of your functions with your apps. You will have most of your apps compatible um, on your Sony screen that you do on your phone. You have any app map that you want. So if you want to use your maps, you're going to use your um, XM. In case you don't select the Sirius F XM module, you can always have the Sirius on your phone and you know, wirelessly connect. Let's take a look at a couple of other things here. Um, something else that is a pretty key feature of this guy. So, you know, as we know, it has our rear camera, which we went ahead and installed. There's our rear camera view. The neat thing about this Sony 9500 ES is that it has two other camera options. Camera one, which I don't have connected, maybe in another video, all right. Uh, vehicle info. This is because the Maestro is, pre is flashed to the Jeep's year and model, which we do for you guys. So when you receive it, it'll come 100% ready to go. Something else that we didn't have before in our JKs are the gauge features. Zero to 60 miles per hour, quarter mile, intake, 
RPM, fuel, etc. Something else that I get a lot of questions on is steering wheel controls, right? Um, is, the, is this unit going to retain the factory steering wheel controls? And yes, it absolutely is. Um, when, you select the, when you select the model and the unit, the bundle on our website, um, you're also going to enter in your Jeep year and model. And with that, we're going to flash that Maestro according to that, and that's going to allow you to retain your steering wheel controls as we have here. All right, with that, um, we have fully installed our, our Sony 9500 ES. Um, I, had a, I had a great time installing this. I hope you guys really enjoyed everything that the Sony 9500 ES has to offer. So if you're interested in, in picking up one of our Sony 9500 ES bundles, please visit us at www.trail7.com. And until next time, we'll see you on the trails.